What's up everybody? My name's Dan On. Welcome to Honestly. We did it everybody, our very first sponsored video ever here on Honestly, and huge shout out to today's sponsor, Intel. Intel not only sponsored today's video, but sent over two of their brand new processors, the 12th gen Intel Core i5-12600K and their top of the line Intel Core i9-12900K. Now, I'm super excited to get my hands on these because Gamers Nexus actually crowned both of these CPUs in the top spots for the top CPUs of 2021. To find out more, you can click the link down below, but in today's video, I'm gonna be putting both of these processors into the Leon Lee Dynamic O11 mini case. But here's the thing, I'm gonna be testing for gaming and video editing, which are things that I do on a daily basis, but I wanna know what thermals look like when you put it on air using the Noctua D15, and when you cool it using liquid cooling using MSI's Meg Core Liquid S360i all-in-one cooler. But before I do that, let me talk about in very plain, everyday human language why these processors are so exciting. The 12th generation processors are so impressive because they're using a hybrid design using two different kinds of cores, the performance cores or the peak cores, and the efficiency cores or the E cores. And what this means in plain everyday language is that let's say you're doing something that's CPU intensive. Well, in that case, the P cores will activate to give you the most performance possible. However, instead of wasting performance cores to do all those other background tasks, such as task manager and other things to keep the PC alive, the P cores can focus on the major task at hand. Meanwhile, the efficiency cores will handle all of that background stuff. And that means the P cores, your fastest cores, will be able to handle those things that need to be handled. But this also works in the reverse because we're not always video editing, we're not always gaming. And in those cases, the P cores will take a backseat and the efficiency cores, which are more efficient, will take center stage. And what this means for us overall means better resource management. It means better performance overall when it comes to intensive tasks and less intensive tasks, as well as less overall power draw compared to previous generations. Intel's next generation architecture also provides future proofing for two major technologies. One is PCI Express Gen 5.0. This here is a PCI Express Gen 4.0 NVMe drive sent over by Team Group, and these are blazingly fast, but the PCIe Gen 5.0 drives are coming and they're going to effectively double the speed of these drives, which is insane and I'm super psyched to see it. And in addition, Nvidia has reported that their 40 series graphics cards will be able to utilize the, the bandwidth available on PCIe 5.0. So going by the current prices of the RTX 30 series, the RTX 40 series is gonna cost about the price of your soul. It also supports the brand new but impossible to find unless you have Bruce Wayne money, DDR5 memory. When you build with these processors, there are a few things you need to know. One is that you're gonna need a motherboard that can support the LGA1700 socket. The only motherboards available right now that can support that are the Z690 motherboards. There are works and talks of other motherboards coming, there always are. However, right now, as of right now, only the Z690 can support it. In addition to that, a lot of CPU coolers don't come with LGA1700 bracket support out of the box, which means you either have to order it separately, which is what I had to do for my Noctua cooler, or you have to call the company, like Cooler Master is offering those bracket adapters for free, or there are a very handful of coolers that have that bracket included, such as the MSI Meg S360 Core Liquid All-in-One Cooler. Now this is very, very important. Make sure you choose the right motherboard because you're gonna see your motherboard's name, Z690, blah, 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 and it's gonna end with DDR4 or DDR5. And the reason why this is so important is because DDR5 is not backwards compatible. So if you have DDR4 RAM but a DDR5 motherboard, it will not work. On the contrary, PCI Express 5.0 is backwards compatible, so all the motherboards will have PCI Express 5.0 and you can use your PCI Express 4.0 peripherals inside of it just fine. One final note before you go to build is that these new processors using that hybrid design we talked about, performance cores and efficiency cores, that delineation of cores can only happen on Windows 11. Now this processor is compatible with Windows 10. However, unlike the smart assignment of cores, on Windows 10 it's just gonna go, ah, throw all the cores at a task. So again, you're not gonna have that hybrid design actually at work on Windows 10. I think that's everything. Let's get building.
the full list of components are going to be listed on the screen, and the ones highlighted in yellow are the ones that Intel sent over in addition to their CPUs. On both the air-cooled and the liquid-cooled configurations, I've got two 140mm Noctua fans intaking air from the bottom, as well as intaking air from the side. And in the all-in-one cooler variant, I've got the radiator up top with the three fans that came with the radiator or with the all-in-one cooler exhausting air up top. And in the air cooling fan configuration, in lieu of the radiator, I've got two additional 140mm Noctua fans up top exhausting air out top. And on the D15, the cooler itself, I've got air intaking from the back. So essentially it's intaking from the side, the bottom and the back and exhausting it all out through the top. That might not be the ideal configuration on this case, although on a typical ITX case, that would be the ideal configuration. Let me know in the comments below if there is a better fan configuration for air cooled on the mini case. Dan from the future here, I redid the air cooling test except changing the CPU fan configuration to exhaust rather than intake and the results were confusing. The graphics card's temperatures were significantly lower in this configuration than any other configuration I did, but the CPU's temperatures gets a little bit weirder. In games and when rendering a video in Premiere Pro, the CPU's temperatures were significantly lower. But when doing hardcore CPU focused tasks, such as synthetic benchmarks, and even when using warp stabilizer in Premiere Pro, the CPU's temperature actually got higher than when intaking air. So cooler me <laughs> confused because I don't know what's going on. Let me know your guys' theories down in the comments below. Based on the way I had my fan set up, it seems like liquid cooling is clearly the way to go on these processors. And as I mentioned, the air cooling gets confusing. Now, when it comes to the synthetic benchmarks, I'm not a huge fan because I don't know what that means for real life performance. But what I thought was really amazing was that especially in Cinebench, look at how these processors line up compared to other processors with more cores and more threads. I thought it was absolutely ridiculous. However, in real life performance, I tested some of the games that I play and I saw anywhere between a 0 to 7% increase of FPS going from the 12600K to the 12900K. Now, when it comes to productivity, video editing, which is what I do, what I thought was fascinating was that I rendered a 10 minute 4K video file that was about 7.7 .7 gigabytes. It was a big file because I have the bit rate set to 100 megabytes per second and both processors rendered them in about the same amount of time, which goes to show how beast the 12600K really is. However, when I did a more CPU intensive task using warp stabilizer on a seven second clip, you can see that there is a clear advantage that 12900K has over the 12600K being about 25% faster. So what does this mean? It means that if you're looking to do 4K video editing and you wanna do gaming and you want excellent performance, but the price to performance ratio really matters to you, the 12600K is clearly hands down the best all arounder. However, if you want the maximum FPS you can get and you want the best productivity speeds out there available, the 12900K is gonna be the one for you. All right guys, I hope this video helps. I hope it helps you guys figure out which cooling solution you should go in a smaller case using these processors. And again, a huge shout out to Intel for sponsoring this video. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up and like and subscribe for the algorithm. Leave a comment down below letting me know what you guys thought of this video. And until next time guys, stay safe and as always, stay honest.